Well, well, well. What do we have here? <laughs> oh, don't mind me. I'm just off to Manchester Town Square to slay some peasants. So yeah, as you can see, I've competed. I've finished my first competitive season. I didn't film anything um, on the show days. I just wanted to, this was my first competitive season. So I, you know, the, the whole thing of competing was stressful enough. I wanted to be very present in the moment and just focus on uh, the day itself and the event and just making sure I was like mentally prepared. I didn't want to have a videographer there um, having to, you know, look after him and talk to the camera and it's just another element that would stress me out. Um, now I've got some experience, I will run through exactly what went down in my first competitive season. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what, what we'll do for this video, right, is I'll just have a sit down chat as well for everything. I am very aware that it's been quite a while since I've posted. Um, and this is the one element of my, of my life and everything that I really want to do better at YouTube. Okay, everything else I'm very on point with, but I, you know, I always promise myself, right, I'm going to put out YouTube this week and it, and it annoys me that I don't. So this is a promise to myself. I'm going to be documenting my off-season progress uh, on the lead up to my next competitive season next year where I will be going for a pro card. Um, I will explain what happened this year, what went down, the shows I did, how I did, and the approach we took and um, what I will be doing differently next year. And then the upcoming videos so for you know for this weekend i'm actually going to film a full day of eating going through my off-season diet uh, but first let's tackle the shows so i'm going to do I'm just going to sit down on the sofa and talk to you about what happened so many of you may be confused um just because obviously on my previous videos i was aiming for the july 15th regional Hard Body Classic, Two Bros Show, which hasn't even arrived yet. Um, so yeah, my competition prep uh, and first season started and finished all but, oh, the sun's coming to my eyes, hopefully that isn't annoying. I'm gonna sit here. All, it started and finished before my first show, my first originally planned show has even come. This is because I came in very quickly. Uh, body fat pulled off a lot faster than we predicted. Um, we didn't do an aggressive fat loss approach at all. I was still on, you know, a good 400 carb for a lot of the prep. And then we dropped that down and we did do, um, we, we just thought, you know, seeing as this is my first season, I was coming in very quickly, more experience, the better. So we decided to dip into an early show, which was the uh, condition cup. Um, which was in Wigan, okay? So we had planned to do this, this was secret. I didn't tell anyone other than my close circle, family and friends who you know are here with me in Manchester. And um, we just pulled a little bit harder towards that. Plan for that show was to just see how I fared, get some stage experience, okay? And then move into the later shows. So what happened here was on the week of the show, we pulled down to 200 carb. Um, so from my start weight, from when I started my competition prep, I'll put up some photos actually of how I looked. I was 116 kilograms, okay? And then stage weight, when I competed, I was around 90. I dipped down to about 98, okay? And we did that in uh, 10 weeks. So it was a very short competition prep. I am someone with a very fast metabolism. I can diet on a lot of food. It just means that I have to also push food very hard in the off season. So it's a blessing and a curse. For me, I much prefer prep um, and dieting. Okay, so for me, it suits me. So we dipped into this early show, the Condition Cup. Okay, and I signed up for Novice. Okay, seeing as I haven't competed before and obviously I haven't won an overall before. So a Novice class just for anyone that doesn't know, is for anyone that hasn't won an overall, okay, in a show, okay? So did that and I also signed up for the open class F because I'm six foot three, which is the tallest class. So in men's physique, it's done in class, uh, height classes and there's no weight cap at the moment. Well, I think they're bringing one in. 
but obviously there wasn't one when I competed. Okay, so went into the show with no real expectations and I ended up winning my class in the novice, which is where I got this. So first place in the novice. So then I came back, uh, backstage, and they say, right, open class, up you go. So I went up against uh, one other lad. So there's only two people in my classes, two people in my class, uh, me and another lad. He's also with Team Pro Coach, actually, which was quite cool. Um, and it, just to be completely transparent, it was only two people in our class. I won my class, okay, which is where, I win this, so two class wins, so I was absolutely buzzing. So first, you know, show that I've done, win both my classes, which means then, for anyone who doesn't know, again, if you win the open class, okay, if, of your height category, all the class winners, okay, then go into an overall show at the end of the show, okay? And then the winner of the overall against all the height categories wins the open, uh, wins the overall which I then did. So I won the overall, which is where I got this sword. Very fucking sick sword as well. Hopefully that, uh, hopefully that comes up there on the screen. Nice engraving there. And on the side it says, it's got an engraving in it, which is pretty sick. NPC Worldwide, the Condition Cup 2023, Men's Physique Open Champion. Okay, so amazing result. Something that I didn't expect. And uh, my coach came backstage and my mates came backstage, you know, we're all laughing like, wow, first ever competition and I won the overall. So honestly, you know, the feeling that I got from that was just, it's hard to put into words really. I was pretty emotional and overwhelmed uh, because I didn't expect it. I knew I put all the hard work in, but obviously I was dipping into an early show. So I wasn't really too sure what to expect. And um, honestly, it was just, I was riding on such a high. Anyways, got back, went out for a nice meal. Discussion, discussions were had with my coach Ross and we were like, why don't we just go for a pro qualifier the following week, which was in Alicante, which was the Amateur Olympia. Okay, so, you know, one of the, one of the best top amateur shows, you know, in the world. And uh, so, so excited, got back and we booked that. So, peaked for that pretty much, a few days on the on lead up to it. And then I, we booked the flights, booked the Airbnb, and I, Ross realized, my coach realized my passport was fucking expired. So, obviously lots of stress, trying to sort that out, going back and forth with the passport office, trying to sort something out. Ended up not being able to sort one then, so missed out on that show okay which was just gutting but managed to change the airbnb change the flights for the following week no two weeks later which then was the m pro classic okay another pro qualifier so there was one pro card on the line for this okay so if you win the overall of a pro qualifier for those who don't know you win an ifbb pro card which obviously is everyone's goal who is competing Okay, so for this show, once again, I had no real expectations. My main goal for this, obviously, you know, I'd like to say, right, I'd love to win a pro card, but it's my second show. It's my first season, like I'm not expecting anything. The main goal of this was data and feedback. So go to a top show with top amateurs and see how I fare. Okay, so we went to Alicante, amazing place. You know, I'm, before I even competed, I was like, this is a win in itself, just being here, like, Competing abroad, it was so nice. The weather was lovely. People there are lovely. You know, I really want to go back there for a holiday. Actually, uh, when I'm not on prep and I can go out and eat nice food. So had a good couple sessions there, pump sessions. Went to Titan Gym and Holiday Gym, I think it was called, which was nice. Um, and I was fuller. I was better. So you know, than the two weeks before. So. If I would have competed at the Amateur Olympia, I would have been, you know, back to back shows weekend to weekend. That first show, I felt like I was too flat because we were basically pulling down to 100 kilograms, okay? So, you know, I was flat. I, was, I felt like I was quite stringy and I wasn't my best. Even though I won the overall, you know when you're at your best. 
you know, when I was doing my shots on stage, I wasn't feeling that fullness. I wasn't feeling that pump that I know I could have. So, you know, if I would have then competed the following week, digging again to get in, you know, com competition lean shape, you know, I wouldn't have been my best. So in some ways, even though it was a big financial hit because obviously we had to change the, uh, change the flights, I had to pay 200 pounds to get an express passport. You know, it cost me an absolute fortune. You know, if you haven't competed before, it costs a lot of money. Obviously it's an investment, I'm not complaining. I wouldn't have changed it for the world and I'd do it a hundred times again. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a big investment. So, you know, going then into, so you want to do well, really, don't you? <laughs> so you? So basically going into that next show, Emperor Classic that I did, I had a big feeding, I had a week on high food, fill up a bit. Um, and then we did dig down. I got actually down to my lowest weight, which was 95 kg, which is the lowest I've been for a very long fucking time. I was very lean, I was very shit, shredded, very sharp. I put up some like checking photos as well for where, what I looked like at 95 kilograms. I was at my lowest, and then we got to feed up into this Empro Classic show. So, you know, I was a, a lot fuller, a lot tighter. Um, so my overall look was just, night and day to that original regional qualifier where I obviously won the overall but obviously the standard at this Emperor Classic Pro Qualifier is a lot higher. These are people going for pro cards, people that are you know seasoned veterans that have been fucking you know competing for years and years and years. These are the people that I was going up against so you know I had to be on my A game. So yeah fed up but the thing is when you're abroad competing abroad it's very hot obviously you, you demand more hydration and you know your glycogen is used way quicker and you know everything I was eating a lot uh, but I was just flattening off, flattening off very quickly so I had a training session the day before of the show and I looked honestly spot on and I was like fuck me like I, I, I could pull this off here um, but on the day I flattened off a little bit I did obviously get a good pump up and I looked much better but I know I can be fuller so I just know that I need more filling for, for my next shows and I just need more muscle. So anyways, did the Empro Classic, came second in my class, was quite frustrated. Um, I'm definitely not a sore loser, but everyone was telling me you got this, like, you know, you've, uh, I don't, I, I, I'm running the risk here of sounding like a sore loser and I'm definitely not the type of guy that says like, oh, you know, I just wasn't what they wanted on the day, but you know, it's one of those things where I was looking, I, I know I had the best men's physique shape, you know, I have, I have big delts, you know, I have great obliques, I had great posing, my back was stronger, but this guy that beat me had just deeper abs, probably a fuller chest as well. And within men's physique, they love those big, deep abs, you know, a thick, um, defined midsection. And I know I lack that, just from neglect of not training abs over the years. Um, and I know that, I know that. Anyways, so I came second in my class. So I didn't make it to the overall. And to be honest, you know, it's a top amateur show. I got second, I should have been happy, but I got backstage and I was like, oh, honestly, so emotionally, emotionally sad. Like I was just so upset because I thought I had it. Everyone was telling me I had it. And um, one of the promoters, I believe he was, he was like, oh, you look the best there, you're gonna win. And then obviously to then get a second, but anyways, the guy that beat me, obviously deserve it. Not putting him down whatsoever. It was just going to me because I thought I had it. Anyways, um, yeah, came second. So got the second place medal, silver. And in the grand scheme of things, now when I you know reflect back, I think second is the best thing that could happen to me. And obviously winning would be the best. But say if I win my first, you know, I go into a regional, right? I win the overall. I go then into a pro qualifier, one of the top amateur shows, and I win. I might get comfortable. You know, you might think, oh, you know, I've just, <laughs> I've just won my first two shows. It might. I'm a very driven person. I'm very hungry. I'm very focused. But you never know what happens to their brain. You know, in these sort of things. So, came, coming second for me has made me just so hungry. You know, it's uh, I came so close but didn't quite get there. So. Feedback from the judges was very clear and simple. Deeper 
upper chest, which I know my chest lacks. And when I pose, I, I tend to pull it down as well to crunch my abs. So I need to make sure my chest is nice and full. And the first thing that flattens off for me as well, when I get flat is my chest. Okay, secondly, better abs. Train my abs, which I am now doing. So we did then think, right, let's go and do the Portugal Amateur Olympia in three weeks time. Okay, but with that feedback, I can't get bigger, deeper abs, a better midsection, and I can't get a bigger chest with more prepping and more digging. I don't want to run the risk of fading and wasting weeks and wasting a lot more money as well to then not win. I've only, I had only, when we had, I'd competed there at that pro qualifier, I'd only been on blasting on my blast cycle uh, on high gear for 10 weeks. So, you know, it's fuck all time. And I then have a long runway to do a rebound, which we are now doing. So now the plan is going to an off season gaining phase from now all the way through till next year. My uh, workout split has changed, big focus on chest, obviously everywhere else as well, but like my push days are very chest dominant because my delts are very strong. Um, you know, I've still got delt work in there, but it's focusing around the chest and specifically that top line here, the, the upper fibers. Secondly, I'll be training my abs every other day. I'm still doing faster cardio. Um, so I'll be, you know, keeping that in my routine and just keep that consistent because what I tend to do is during my diet, I'll train abs when my food's low and my potential to grow muscle is low. And then during the off season when I can't see my abs, I never train them. And that's just me being fucking lazy. So during this off season phase, I'm gonna train my abs just like any other muscle. Any, every other day, two, three exercises, three sets and progressively overload them. You know, cable crunches, hanging leg raises, plank every other day um, and they will come up. Even just that time on the prep where I was training them 10 to 12 weeks religiously, they have come up a lot. Um, and also I'll be doing vacuums, like 10 vacuums every morning just to keep that waist nice and tight during the off season. So that is the plan for me. I've got new, obviously food. My food's been brought right up because I came back and we put my food to 550 carb, 300 protein, 55 fat, and I lost two kilograms. I was back down to 98 kg after my first week back here. And obviously that's not what we want. We're trying to, you know, push up and gain muscle tissue and utilize this rebound. So now my food is up to um, 720 grams of carbs. Okay, 300 grams of protein and 55 fat still. Um, so what I'm gonna do is my next video over the weekend, over the next, you know, coming week, I'm gonna film a full day of eating for my gaining phase diet. Um, pretty much similar food, keeping it super, super controlled. I've had a few off plan meals. Obviously I had a burger after the show. Uh, after the Alicante show, um, just to enjoy, you know, being in Alicante. Went out the next day, had a nice pizza in a lovely restaurant, salt and pepper, I believe, if anyone's been there. Um, and then came back and I've had a couple things, one a week, and I'm gonna keep off plan meals to maximum one a week and just utilize this um, rebound phase as you know as much as possible really keep it nice and tight whilst pushing food up of highest quality if possible so you know i'm sticking to my four meat and rice a day and then two cream of rice and whey super simple um, and my appetite is absolutely through the roof at the moment so you know i'm in a very very good spot i've still got a very long runway for my gear cycle without having to pull back because obviously I haven't been, you know, sometimes people might do 20, 25 week prep. By the end of their competitions, they've got to go into a health phase, pull down to like TRT or a cruise, yeah? Whereas I've only been blasting for 10 weeks, so I've still got, you know, the potential for another 10, 12 weeks on cycle with high food. So where my insulin sensitivity is gonna be, you know, super high. Um, and yeah, I've, uh, I've grown a lot you know, obviously it's just fullness and glycogen and whatnot and, you know, but, you know, I'm feeling great. My physique's coming to life. I might even just post a few like iPhone photos on here just to see how my physique's looking now off the back of the show. I'm up now this morning to 101.7 kilograms. So not up by much, but I feel great. My physique's coming to life, you know, that is the problem with me. Like I said, I do flatten off a lot and my physique when I'm pumped to when I'm flat is night and day. When I'm pumped, I'm like, fuck me, like this is, I look the bollocks, like, you know, I'm very competitive here. Then when I'm flat in the morning, I'm on low food, like I really do feel quite feeble. It's the same with most people, but it is quite drastic with me. 
So yeah, that is a summary. I won't bore you too much. I understand this is a very long sat down talking video, so I appreciate anyone who's stuck with it. I thought I'd just owe you an explanation on what happened over the past weeks with my comps. Um, and, I, uh, uh, and I obviously didn't really document much on YouTube just because I was, my head was so, you know, focused on the show. I just, you know, all my mental capacity really, if anyone knows, you know, when you're competing and whatnot, like you are digging, you know, anything that is uh, hard to do is just even more difficult to do. So all my energy went into looking after my current clients, doing the check-ins, doing the client setups and doing my work in the gym, prepping, and then just preparing for the shows, because I'm not gonna lie, but like, the pressure and stress I put myself under for these shows was, you know, heavy. Um, I didn't, you know, express it much, but you know, I was, wasn't sleeping very well, you know, waking up at four in the morning every day, just with a very busy mind, like, I'd wake up at four and just couldn't get back to sleep, so I was just thinking about it, thinking about it. My brain was just turning over. So I didn't really feel like I wanted to expel more energy into, you know, documenting on YouTube, which is uh, selfish and also, you know, it's, uh, I, I could have created a lot more content around it, but it's one of those things where I put my all into the competing. I did well, I believe, for my first season, you know, I competed twice, won both my classes, won the overall, got a second in a pro qualifier abroad in a top amateur show. So I'm happy, I'm very, very happy. And, um, you know, reflecting back, getting that second is actually a great thing for my hunger and focus moving into this gaming phase. So yeah, on retrospect, you know, it couldn't have gone better for me. The experience of competing in Alicante was just incredible. And um, thank you for sticking with the channel. Thank you for supporting. Thank you to everyone. If any of my friends or close ones are watching me, um, thank you for supporting me throughout this time and now it's time to put in work, the work doesn't end so this, moving into this gaining phase, nothing in my life changes because all my mates are still on prep because I've competed early, okay, everyone around me is still on prep, so all my life does is shift with high calories, <laughs> I'm still on prep, I'm still doing the morning fasted cardio and abs, okay, obviously less amount. Um, because the goals have changed. So like this gaining phase to me is super personal because I'm coming for that pro card next year and I, and I hand on heart believe I have it in me. I hand on heart believe after a proper, proper structured gaining phase with this level of focus, drive um, and the structure around me, you know, with my, you know, my close ones, my circle, my coach being here and, you know, it, it hopefully will come together next year and we'll get the pro card and um, that'll be that and it's one of those things where I can't promise anything you know I'm not going to say uh, yeah I am but I will give my absolute all and there's nothing that is going to slow me down not at all I'm not going to give in to any distractions this is my life and my passion and um, I, it is my absolute and utter obsession I think about nothing else so when it comes down to it the shows next year, you know, it will be, I know I will have given my absolute all, my life and soul into it. And if it happens, then I deserve it. And if it doesn't, then it's not my time and I'll just go again, go back into a gaining phase and try again. So that's all you can do, isn't it? Be your best, give it your all, and then whatever happens, happens. So thanks for watching, long talking video, but I hope you stuck with it. Like and subscribe, thank you very much.